What's up guys, Record Tech here, and in today's video I'm going to be bringing you the review of the Microsoft Lumia 640 smartphone. And I'm not going to waste any time, so let's get straight into the review and I'll show you what this phone is made of. So let's start off with the operating system. Firstly, this phone runs Windows Phone 8.1 Update 2 and also has Lumia Denim inside as well. The phone itself is around 141mm in height, 72.2mm uh, width and 8.8mm .8 in thickness, which means the phone is not so bulky, it's going to feel uncomfortable in your hand and when you're carrying it around with you. And of course, the minute you turn it on, you are going to see the 5 inch display right on the top, which is bigger than the 4.7 inch the iPhone 6 currently has, and this phone has a pixel density of around 294 pixels per inch, which means you're getting very good quality screen image. The phone has built in 8GB of memory, 8GB of storage, and it has 1GB of RAM, which is not as high as certain phones these days, but for this phone, 1GB of RAM will do it just fine. It has a maximum memory card size, SD card of up to 128GB. This phone has a battery capacity of 2500mAh and a standby time of around 36 days. If you're using this on 2G to call people and use data, this phone will last around 26.5 hours, or if you're going up to 3G, this also comes around 17.5 hours. This phone is also 4G, however I don't have the details for the 4G of how long it will last, but obviously it will be significantly lower than 17.5 hours. This has a Snapdragon processor in it, which means the phone is going to run pretty fast, it's not going to have any performance issues and this has a micro sim card port in it so you can't have a nano sim card or a standard sim card it has to be micro sim it has a 3.5 millimeter audio jack right on the top of the device and it has a micro usb port towards the bottom of the device this also is usb 2 this does not support usb 3 so you're going to have to stick with the slower speeds unfortunately but this phone does also come with bluetooth 4.0. The phone has two cameras on it. Firstly the front camera which is a one megapixel camera so that's quite low but that is only really designed for selfies and low quality pictures whereas the rear camera is eight megapixels and even eight megapixels is higher than some phones these days so you can't really knock that. The camera has a four times digital zoom, which means you can zoom in pretty far on here and you can get high quality pictures even from that zoom. It has a front camera video resolution of 1280 by 720, which is 720p, which is still HD, so you can't really knock that. The main camera on the rear is 1080p, full HD 1920 by 1080 recorder. This phone, as I said before, comes with 8 gigabytes of data. However, you can only use 3.4 gigabytes of that due to system storage. However, if you want more apps on here, you want more files, more pictures, then of course you can upgrade with a micro SD card up to 128 gigabytes in size. And also, you can change where everything is stored on either the phone or the SD card straight from the storage sense settings on the phone itself. You can double tap the lock screen to show the unlock screen or press the lock button on the side. When the phone is locked a dimmed clock will show up until you unlock the phone which is nice to have because then you can see what time it is without having to unlock the phone. You can swipe up from the bottom of the screen to hide and show the navigation bar which is nice if you don't want that constantly showing all the time. You can slide down from the top to show the notifications menu where you can manage the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, turn flight mode on and off and of course you can go straight to the camera from there as well. Games play reasonably well on here, however the quality isn't the sort you would find on an iPhone for example. Also the touchscreen does work reasonably well with games, but lag can occur if a lot is happening on the device at the same time. But this is only because it has 1GB of RAM, whereas majority of phones these days have 2 plus. But apart from this, gaming is pretty fantastic considering this is a budget phone. The device itself is very quick at turning on and off meaning that you can use your phone in a matter of seconds. Some other features about the phone, it's very lightweight, it doesn't feel too heavy in the hands, and it only weighs 145 grams. 
The back cover is made out of a cheap plastic and can easily come off, however it doesn't really feel that tight around the device, which in my point of view is quite negative about this device. The USB port at the base of the phone doesn't look like it's made to fit perfectly with the back cover, however once again this is a budget phone so small errors will be expected. Also, this isn't really a noticeable issue unless you're really looking at it, so just standard usage, plugging it in and out, you know, you're not going to notice the issue, but of course I've looked very carefully at this device to do the review for you. Also, the back plate does leave fingerprint smudges, however these can be wiped clean, so that's not too much of an issue. Also, if you have the black phone, which I currently am reviewing right now, then it's not going to be too big of an issue because they don't really show up on black. But anyway, that's it for this review. I uh, hope you liked the review. This phone is a very quality phone considering it's really a budget phone. Uh, this starts off around £120 from Microsoft Direct or even other third party retailers. And once again, thank you for Vodafone for sending me this phone. Check out the website in the description below or on screen now. Check out the website for full details on when you can purchase this phone and what contract you can get on this phone. But thank you very much for watching this review guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more content, uh, comment below and leave a like if you like this video and I'll see you again in the next one.